When everybody calls you and says, I need to be in, I need to be in this, right. isn't that like the high sign that you're supposed to run for the hills? It is, and it's been happening over the last couple of weeks where clients <laughs> will call and say, well, how do I get part of Bitcoin? And then you try explaining blockchain to them, and they say, well, everybody else is making money in this, so how come I'm not in it? And I think the more we get into a liquid market, there's more potential for people to understand what's going on. My question to you gentlemen is, You've got all these different systems going on now. Is there going to be arbitrage? Are the algs going to come in and they're going to start playing yeah. this? And it's, it's going to get so complicated, even more so? Yeah, it's going to be like any other asset class out there. I mean, right now it's incredibly inefficient, right? We have a very young market. The Bitcoin itself has been around for eight, nine years now. The trading markets are really just maturing. So it will get more complicated. More strategies will come in. When we have options, we'll have all of that. You know, this is the first day of futures trading. We haven't, haven't had a lot. Uh, but to your point about your know, clients calling you and saying, hey, how do I get in? To me, that's the bullish side. We're, we're looking at retail investors in this. Almost no institutional investors have really put any stake in this. And, and that's, been a, that's been a huge barrier, that institutional investors have a mandate where they cannot be in Bitcoin. And so you still have this potential uh, natural buyer or, or seller of but Bitcoin. But this is the reverse of what most people usually think happens, which is that, that right. somehow the in institutional investors leave the retail guys holding the bag. And this time... Retail folks think that they're going to leave the big institutions holding the bag. Yeah, Do you buy I, that? I totally agree. And actually, Don put it well. Like you have this building crescendo of volume, only a few tens of hundred, uh, tens of millions of dollars so far. Bitcoin over the last 24 hours traded over 14 billion dollars. So even w when this starts to become shortable and people start doing that. It's going to take a lot of risk capital to actually affect the market in a way that's meaningful. But we do expect this to continue to build and more liquidity to continue to come in. One of the analogies that I really like is actually commodities. So with commodities for a long time, you had certain assets that weren't easily held or people couldn't get exposure to. If you wanted exposure to sugar or coffee, that's not something you can easily hold. It spoils, there's seasonality, there's different elements to it. Now there's no seasonality to Bitcoin, right. but it is operationally complex and it's hard to back, hold and now people have a vehicle to do that. Back to the arbing idea, can I just buy it on one exchange and sell it on another? Is, are people just doing that all day long? Yeah, you yeah. could. You could, but, but what? But, but, so the two contracts that we have, the one that's out right now for CBOE right. and the one that comes out of the CME are based on two different different reference prices. Now remember a futures price like WTI right. crude oil futures are based on a certain price for crude at a certain time. Right, but, no, so if the Gemini, the Gemini, which is the right. CBOE price, is different than the one that the reference rate. No, the I'm, I'm, not even, I'm not even trading the futures here. I'm you trading just, just yeah. straight, straight Bitcoin. I'm saying I'm saying Coinbase is selling at one price. These other yes, guys and are people just are gonna, doing that all day long. All day long, just do that. That's, yes. the, so, that's the, arguably the next, the next frontier for electronic trading in high frequency is this idea that you can move between jurisdictions. I'm curious, what's the biggest arbitrage opportunity? Because there are certain exchanges where you won't right. be able to easily sell it. Like, for instance, if I did want to buy in the U.S. and sell in Zimbabwe because the spread <laughs> is so huge, right. that's not really possible. It's not really possible, particularly with Zimbabwe, because you have to pay a couple people off to actually get that done, so the <laughs> spread doesn't example, work. But, I mean, but, it is but if you spread. look at something, like, for example, the Korea-U.S. spread is usually pretty big. And the reason why is it's very difficult once you get money into Korea with capital controls to get that money back. So you'll have that spread. But inter-market, inter even between Gemini and Coinbase, you can see a couple percent spread and there are major firms that are trading that arb right now by the way that that's one of the reasons why arguably when we talk about volume driving things the more volume comes in the smaller those spreads arguably become right now there's a huge transaction cost even though they won't say it up front about the, the commission side of things there is a very a, a fairly wide spread between where you can buy a Bitcoin and where you like can sell a Bitcoin. Bucks right. overnight. And then not just that, on certain exchanges, there's also a transaction fee that goes on top of that. So as you have these very fat, juicy stakes out there worth of worth of spread, it's going to attract more people into the marketplace. As more people go into the marketplace, you can see some of those transaction costs perhaps becoming a little bit smaller because there's now competition, but you don't know whether or not it really lends legitimacy to this idea that, and, that and Bitcoin's going And you're actually starting to see that already. So you're going to have arbitragers who bring together the futures and the underlying. You have high frequency traders, people using quant signals who couldn't before. You almost have this funny psychological moment where people feel like they have to be in, and now there's finally a vehicle where they can be. Okay, let me, let me ask this. For those who have missed the train, and, and Joe's, we've been using this analogy for the yeah. last year, because by the way, I missed the train it's not on, uh, on, on Joseph's Trump, Trump rally. As, right. uh, um, <laughs> it started at Penn Station, it's now in St. Bart's, Correct. I think. Yeah. It's uh, turned it, it's planes, trains, ships. And, you know, it's all the way down to St. Powell at this point. Yeah, the, the okay. equator. The, the, the question I have is,
to the extent you see a potential hiccup along the way or a pullback along the way for those of us who think maybe we want to be in this, but maybe we don't want to be in this right now. Is there is there some catalyst that would take you there? So yes. I'll let Brian comment, too. I think you haven't missed any train that something like one percent of people in the world own this asset. And one good analogy that I know, Brian, and we like to talk about uh, people say digital gold. We like the, the analogy of the offshore banking system, which is $20 trillion. Currently, all of cryptocurrency combined is a little over $400 billion. So it's still trivial relative to what you know, real fundamental demand that we can see in the world today. Wow, and it does the same thing. An order of magnitude better and cheaper. No, I mean, it's <laughs> high. I guess it allows you to... You know, do some things you can't always do. Well, it's actually not. I mean, well, you can the see offshore, everything. Offshore, no. I know. Well, offshore I know. banking. <laughs> listen, it's, there's nothing. Listen, people put money in Switzerland. There's nothing wrong with that. I just can't believe. I think I just heard you say it's like a buy and hold uh, asset. Well, it's hyper volatile, right? Yeah, you talk you, about you're never going to be able to issue. I mean, debt I might as well just buy some. Inflate something. away the debt. I mean, there's lots of issues with this well, as, a, well, as a true currency. But you're you're talking about it as a currency. I don't think right. anybody. I don't think well, anybody well, in the it? Bitcoin world is actually. It's like right. gold. It's like digital gold. Currency. But but remember, we're going to have digital equities. We're going to have digital commodities. This is just the tip of the spear. So I mean, we can talk about the technology and it's exciting and the and the, and the volatility. But there's more to this than just arguing okay. whether or not this makes a so good currency. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.